um, is in uh, with our um, our city leaders. And um, I would just a momentarily, I just want to say a couple of things about the program here, how we're going to proceed. Uh, the we're going to start with it's going to be two parts to this program. The first part is a forum with the council candidates. And then uh, we will uh, take a break after that is wrapped up, and then we'll come back with the mayor candidates. So that should be probably about an hour from now. Um, and so you know, they are seated here in alphabetical order. There's no other uh, magic to that. Uh, but that was fair. And also, in fairness, uh, we have provided all the candidates at the same time uh, five questions, and all these questions pertain only to really primarily to the downtown. Um, so we want to help our downtown stakeholders in their decision-making process to understand you know, where each of the respective candidates stands on the downtown. So um, without further ado, we'll get right into the program. We're going to be dispensing with the introductions. I think we all know the candidates. And uh, please read up in the candidate statements that appear in your um, your uh, election uh, notices. So we'll start without further ado. Um, welcome and with candidate Stephen Huber. Question number one. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing about the process. There will be, um, each candidate will be given two minutes to answer, uh, to respond to the questions. We have a timer in the back here that you'll want to uh, pay attention to. Where are you? Right here, oh, right front. Um, just keep an eye on that. We'll give you a signal at 15, uh, 30 seconds and 15 seconds to wrap it up. Okay, so again, uh, candidate Stephen Huber. Uh, question number one. What do you see as the role of the city in revitalizing downtown? Thank you. Thank you, Oxnard Downtown Management District for holding this. And my name is Steve Huber and I want to bring you life to Oxnard. That stands for Leadership, Innovation, Focus, and Efficiency. And I'd like to make sure that the city does the same thing, brings leadership, innovation, focus, and efficiency. And particularly for how you revitalize downtown, it's the focus and leadership. Uh, when I did my research for this, I found a plan for downtown that is half done. Those are the types of things that I'd like to see the city complete and take leadership roles. The other thing that you need is you need to have a safe city. So the city's role in public safety, making sure our streets are safe, clean, and also infrastructure, make sure that our roads are safe, that we have water, we have sewer, we have utilities and infrastructure that we need to have. Um, parking management is an issue that the city needs to take care of. Let's fill the buildings first and then worry about parking. We need to make sure that the city participates fully in the master plan. Not make a new plan, but to enhance or expand the current plans that we have. Finally, regulatory support. We need to make sure that the city is the city of yes, not the city of no. We need to make sure that our permits process is a good process, it's a friendly process, it's a business friendly process. I'd like to make sure that we look at other things, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but our tourism, lodging, housing, things like that. We may need to change some zoning, some codes, etc. That's what the city can do to revitalize downtown. We also need to find a way to get to the 101 down. We'll talk about that later. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Dick Hawkins, and I'm uh, born and raised here in the city of Oxnard. First of all, let me just say that, uh, first and foremost, I do not represent any special interest. And none at all, none at all. I just say that because as I make my comments tonight, uh, looking at this and trying to answer the questions, I, I came to the conclusion that I've never been in any business. I've never been in a situation where every day I'm unemployed until I get a lead and I get some business. So trying to tell everybody how to do this is probably not my spirit, but I want, I'll listen as an elected official, I'll look at it, to try to come up with the answer that we'll talk about later. Uh, what does the city role in this? To provide resources uh, for whatever plan comes up and is accepted. Uh, I have a couple of some things. Uh, for instance, I 
think the city should provide a safe and clean environment, undermine both clean and safe. I think we need a vacancy law. We need the city attorney to help us out there because of the app at night, et cetera. Some people have told me that they have a little bit of a right to be down here. And then the whole idea of downtown merchants is nine city blocks, and they're not much uh, thought given to the Oxnard Boulevard, but talking with them, uh, talking to the owners over there, they want to be included because that is the window to our city. And that also needs to be cleaned up and uh, so that the people that come downtown can either come from uh, the boulevard or go from downtown to the boulevard. It shouldn't be two separate situations. That's a nine block uh, area that has to be dealt with. So uh, with that, uh, I'll, I'll give this to the next speaker. Hi, my name is Linda Linderman. My name is Linda Linderman. And the downtown section here is a historical site, and we need to continue to develop it as a um, historical site. I know that the city is looking at a, a five-year plan um, to, for redevelopment for downtown area as well as the, the rest of Oxnard. Um, but some of the things that we can do is to, um, you know, we can't really compete with what's going on over at River Park, but we can, we have to give people a reason for coming here. So we can build upscale restaurants um, in our downtown area, and we can have uh, things like, I, I know I went up to Santa Barbara one time and did a wine walk, and why can't the city here do like a wine walk type of thing? Uh, it's, it's going to take not just the city council, um, but it's going to take the, the staff, and it's going to take all, all of us working together to turn the city around and to have a, have a budget that is realistic that we can work within. And um, if we have goals to meet, and then we can have uh, we can do the redevelopment on, on a timely schedule. So that's. It. Hello, uh, my name is Oscar Madrigal, and I feel that the city needs to, bro to provide uh, the necessary needs uh, to improve the downtown, be it to meet the needs of the residents. If you have no reason to come to downtown, people will not come. So the city needs to find out what the residents need and what will make them come to downtown so they can provide that for them and we get people here. As previously stated, downtown cannot necessarily go head to head with the collection. However, they could find another need that the residents need to come here. If Los Angeles could revitalize their downtown, then the city of Oxnard could definitely revitalize their downtown. Carmen Ramirez here. For more information, please go to my website because two minutes is absolutely not enough to talk uh, to you about our opportunities and our history here in downtown Oxnard. Um, I used to work on A Street or across from the old bus station and when things were pretty raggedy and run down and they've been improved, but we've had a big turnover. What can the city do to revitalize downtown? Downtown, I think we have to first of all recognize the historical cultural treasures we have downtown. We have the Carnegie, which is world-class art. We have had great restaurants that have come and gone, but we have to improve uh, the pedestrian access. Um, we, I would like to see Ciclavia brought here, Oxnard style, and I've been talking and planning about it. Uh, all of these things need the whole community support, but one of the best things we have down here is our link to both of uh, the transportation center, multimodal transportation center across the street, our historical assets like uh, the Otani's uh, restaurant, which has been there a long time, and I'm linking it up to the Performing Arts Center, which needs a facelift, and also um, to, to the Carnegie, but most of all, our historic homes. No other city in uh, Southern California, except for Pasadena and Los Angeles, 
have the historic homes. This is a treasure. I went on that tour a few days ago. I'm still I'm always overwhelmed by it. We need to enhance that, talk to our Tourist and Convention Bureau to really to raise the uh, profile of it, and thank the people who are working so hard to uh, keep, keep those historic homes in great shape and help the ones who need a little more help. So it's a lot, a lot more to say. Uh, keep in touch with me. Well, my name is Aaron Starr. Thank you very much for having this forum with us here today. The question is, what do you see as the role of the city in revitalizing downtown? I see it basically as our government's role here is to provide the basics as to control crime and to basically repair the streets and infrastructure. You have those basics down first, and that makes everything else possible. Frankly, I don't think government belongs in the business of business. You're just always been bad at this. And if there's any thought here that some governmental agency is going to be able to, through regulation or through some sort of program of subsidizing one business and taxing another, that that's somehow going to wind up with a better outcome, I, it won't happen. It never does. Mostly, we need to get out of the way. Our biggest problem here is that we have a permitting system that is completely broken where it takes months, sometimes years, to get a permit. There are companies that would love to renovate buildings down here, but they don't want to invest the time and the money because it isn't worth it. They're going to get turned down. So that's what I see as the biggest problem here. And there are solutions for that, which we don't have to get into right now. But in addition, we, we step on our own feet here uh, right now. The city does some really strange regulations to get in the way. For example, there's a restaurant on the corner of Oxnard and 6th Street, El Dorado's. I've been there, I visited with the owner. He's got a dance floor that's maybe 10 feet by 10 feet, but you can't dance in it. Why? Because you get a $4,000 dancing permit. $4,000 dancing permit. That's just unreasonable. There's other problems with regulations too, but I'm out of time. I will talk to you about them later. Thank you. Thank you very much for those answers. Now, uh, we've heard from, the, from that side, we're going to hear from the other side. Uh, the next question, and we're going to start with uh, candidate Pacas. Uh, what do you see as the role of the private sector in revitalizing downtown? And we'll go. Thank you. <clears throat> the private sector has to come up with a plan. Remember, I said in the first part of this that. I have never had a business. I've never had to sign the front of the check. And therefore, although I've had businesses, but it's always been a commission basis, but I've never had to use that particular business uh, to feed my family. So in that case, you need to come up with a plan. You need it to uh, have to be viable, it has to be practical, I think, but it has to be inclusive because this isn't the only area that uh, probably will ask for help. So, since everybody is inclusive in this town, let's start here and get a plan. Let's look at it as an elected official. I will try to get, uh, try to ask questions about it, but then you have to get the political will of the council to, to say, yes, we're going to help you in whatever the uh, plan is uh, accepted, and we've got to go from there. But it's really very, very important that you get the political <coughs> will, uh, get on board. Now, you look at it, you don't have to reinvent anything, but you've got to look at the demographics of downtown. Go somewhere and see where that's, uh, you know, success, Oliveira Street, uh, Atlanta, uh, the Gaslight, uh, I think that's in San Diego. Uh, you need to start somewhere and, and get a frame and go from there. But your first thing that the private sector has to do is get a plan that can be put into place. And of course, last but not least, uh, it has to be funded. So, of course, that's one of the things that hasn't come from the city, has it? And I just feel as a disclaimer here, I think that the city has, has failed down now. I mean, look where we're at right now. Thank you. Okay. The private sector needs to support, uh, in one way, by spending your money downtown. Um, I know that there's weddings and receptions. 
Heritage Fair, Heritage Square over here for weddings. Um, maybe they could market that a little bit more, and uh, I know that it is very profitable. Um, also, business meetings, maybe different business leaders and organizations could hold their meetings downtown. So that would, you know, they maybe they could have lunch meetings and that type of thing that would also, uh, we have to support uh, the, the downtown area and we, have to, we all have to be willing to uh, bring our, uh, spend our money downtown. Um, also, um, increased tourism. You know, we have a deep water port here. And, you know, it can, large ships can come in here. So how about we talk to um, the different cruise lines, like Princess and Carnival, they do like three-day cruises. And each ship that comes in spends a minimum of a, of a million dollars in each time. So even if we got one a week, that would maybe help increase and vitalize downtown with the spending of money. Um, so I think that it, tourism is our, is our biggest goal that, that we need to Uh, the role that the private sector should uh, serve for revitalizing downtown is simple. Um, we need the private sector to revitalize downtown. Okay, it's just essential that they buy in and that they invest in our downtown. Um, however, the city needs to come up with a plan and it has to make sense for the private sector. No one's going to invest their time, their money here in downtown if it doesn't make sense for them. If they're gonna lose money, no one's gonna come over here. So again, it needs to make sense for the private sector to come in and invest. So I believe that's up to the city. Once the city comes up with a plan, then the private sector will gladly come in and revitalize the downtown. I think the city, uh, it, it can't be just what uh, one, one sector does. The private sector, has done a lot already to um, revitalize downtown. We've had a recession, we've lost redevelopment funds. There may be some other opportunities in the future where uh, different funding sources or incentives or creating special zones might come into play where people would have an easier time. And definitely I agree that we need to fix our permitting situation. I'm just gonna go a little bit off script. We had a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago about permit planning and the process to hear from the complaints of residents and businesses. Very few people came. But I do think that's one of the things that the private sector can do. Please keep pushing the city to make changes. Even if it was great now, which it isn't, let's have your uh, engagement in how we can improve it. One of the things that I think we do need to do is embrace who we are. I think we're making a mistake if we think people are gonna come here because we're gonna be another Westwood or Santa Barbara, we're not gonna be Camarillo. We have to be Oxnard, and that means embracing our historical features. And we have tremendous history that I think private sector businesses would really um, uh, take advantage of to enhance. People don't like, I think, the generic franchises, the generic strip malls. They want, they want something unique, and Oxnard does have unique. I think there's a lot of investment opportunities there. First of all, there is no private sector plan. There never will be. There never should be. Businesses don't plan as a group to get something done. Each business plans for itself. You're planning to serve customers. That's how you revitalize the area. You have a way to make money. And if you can serve customers and you're making a profit, you better believe you're gonna put money back in your business. That's what it's all about. There's no way the government's gonna do that for you. There's no way that some collection of businesses are gonna do it for you. You're doing it for you. You're doing it for you because you know how to do it. You know how to serve customers. The biggest problem is that us government officials, I'm not going yet, but we're the ones that get away. <laughs> We need to get out of the way. You know, we can't plan which businesses are going to succeed and which ones are going to fail. I can't tell you whether a franchise operation is going to be the best option for this city or individual mom and pop stores are. And nobody can. That's up to you guys. You're the ones that do the experimentation. Business is about taking risk. It's about failing and succeeding. 
You go out there, you test what happens in the real world. If customers are buying it, you keep doing it. And if the customers don't buy it, they're telling you something very important. And very soon, if you don't learn from that, you're out of business. And that's what it's really all about. What we need to do is make sure that government gets out of the way. I mean, I'm here, we need special permission for restaurants downtown to be open up late. That's crazy. You know, that means that people have to go to downtown Ventura instead to be entertained on a Friday or Saturday. That's where they go. So we need to make sure that we, the government, get out of the way. You guys are the most confident folks. You know about running businesses more than anything else. I want to leave that to you. private sector where you realize downtown. This is one of the parking spots, so you know it would it would be nice if there was a way of, of transporting people in so that they don't have that. But um, um, you know the tax credits, um, scheduling things, special activities every week, um, we need to give people a reason to come downtown. So if we have, I know around our calendar, we have certain festivals, maybe we can look at that and put in more, more activities and uh, put out a newsletter to people to let them know what is downtown. I know that the things that they insert in my billing for my, for my water bill is very effective because then it kind of keeps me informed. But if there was a way we could do a newsletter um, to, for the people to let them know what's downtown to attract the people to come downtown. Um, I feel that the city should um, give incentives to uh, the private sector so they can invest here in downtown. I believe it is essential, as of right now, that you know they say that we're halfway there with the plan. We need to accomplish the plan. We need to make sure that whatever the city and the people invested, that it goes the whole way. We need to make sure that we play this out and make sure the downtown is revitalized. So therefore, we do need to give incentive to the private sector in order for them to invest. If the private sector invests, more people would come to the downtown and it will improve the downtown. We have given incentives to the private sector. It hasn't worked out too well, and I think some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that was redevelopment. Uh, you know, we had a recession. Things didn't go the way people planned, so uh, sometimes the city gets stuck with a bill if you give incentives. So we have to really be careful about that. I would like to say one of the things that can be done is look at planning. We have, we have a grant now to change uh, the way Oxnard Boulevard is operating. Uh, now we're supposed to see an elimination of heavy truck traffic. It can be uh, more pedestrian and bicycle friendly. This is a trend in other cities all over the country. Uh, LA just had their Cyclavia, brought lots and lots of people downtown, but the businesses have to sponsor and say they're willing to. And I've heard from business owners downtown who say sometimes the festivals, the fiestas, don't always help them. They have to close up because people are more interested in um, buying from the vendors who are selling food and from the trucks. And that is a problem, I think, uh, generally going. I, I would say what the private sector has to do is keep the city informed about their needs. Is a, is a fiesta, fiesta festival a good thing for them? Um, if we give an incentive, the city gives an incentive to one particular business, does that hurt other businesses? What can we do to recapture some of those redevelopment dollars that we lost through other programs and incentives that might be available later from the legislature or even locally? Um, I, I, I think that it, it takes uh, a lot of us to work together, but we do have to not put Oxnard down, not put downtown down. I come here all the time. I eat breakfast and lunch and dinner many times, and we have uh, tremendous places to go. So let's not overlook what we already have. So the question is, what incentives do you think the city could offer to stimulate private sector investment? Um, one of my favorite economists had a phrase called Todd Stoffel. 
ain't no such thing as free lunch. Money doesn't come from heaven, folks. Money comes from other people. So I don't see the merit of taxing some businesses to give to other businesses. Do you really want the government to be choosing winners and losers here? I don't think downtown should subsidize the collection, and I don't think the collection should subsidize downtown. I think everybody needs to stand up on their own and serve the customers. I don't think any of you want me to make a decision to say, hey, I'm going to provide incentive to some other business to compete with you. I don't think you want that. And frankly, I don't think it would be right for me to do that. I think that sometimes what we do is we offer really odd incentives here. I was told a story once about how a developer here was told that if he wanted to do some work here, that he had to build a theater. Well, that didn't really work out so well. You know, that wasn't an incentive, it was an extraction for him. Our biggest problem is that the city gets in the way. Get the city out of the way. We don't need to give you incentives. You guys have all the incentive in the world. It's called the bottom line. Profits are your incentive. If you can't make without profits, it doesn't make sense for the city to come in and give you money so that you can make money where you can't make money. You guys are talented. You know how to make money. You know which customers you need to serve. You know how to serve them. So no, the government shouldn't be offering any incentives. Get out of the way, you guys do a great job. We just don't get in the way. So just before I was getting ready to get out of the Navy, I was going to start a business and I asked the local official, what incentives do you have to start a small, uh, to start a small business? And he said, we have great weather. I said, no, really, what incentives do you have for small businesses? Because small business is the engine that drives the economy. He says, we have great weather. And so I've been thinking about that for a long time. And some of the things that we need to do in Oxnard is uh, regulatory simplification. Uh, I, the businesses I talk to are very concerned about pulling a permit to make their businesses better. I had to pull a permit for my business. And uh, it wasn't challenging because I have a small business. But I had to go through a lot of wickets to get through that. So we need to make sure that our end-to-end -end process works well. Uh, we also need to make sure that when uh, a restaurant wants to uh, have entertainment or something like that, that we make that process a smooth one as well. Um, I think the city can help uh, by sponsoring applications for federal, state, and other grants. That's other people's money that will help our city. We can sponsor applications for the state infrastructure bank or new market tax credits. Those are new uh, tools or old tools that we can revisit now that we don't have redevelopment funds. And finally, I just want to make sure that we have a fair system for all the businesses across the city, that there's no direct financial benefits that aren't available citywide. In other words, the downtown isn't getting a better deal than Saviors Road, or et cetera, et cetera. So we need to have uh, a level playing field across the city. Again, uh, incentives for the city. Uh, if you read on other successful uh, projects, uh, one that I know of in, in particular, all the way down to New York, outside of Albany, that a little city actually gave a business a land and a building to do business there because it provided 100 jobs. I'm not saying that, but that whole idea of almost uh, not letting them to refuse think about it or anything else, you go there for some reason, I'm not saying that necessarily, but we need to have, the city needs to provide a staff, if we have a commission, or we have somebody that's assigned to this, those people that have worked for the city have to provide all of the energy and have to energize the rest of us who are on the council and keep us, uh, keep us abreast of everything that's going on and keep letting us know how successful this is coming on so that that positive image is always going on. So as far as the city uh, incentive, I would think that let's get some people that start helping out to be very innovative. Very innovative. We're talking about uniqueness <coughs> here. We need somebody to find out what will make us unique and what will make us successful. Like I said again, uh, the business owner probably know that. That'd be part of the plan. Uh, but if not, uh, we have people that are paid 
rather well, as I understand, to come up with some innovative ideas. So uh, I think the city can, uh, can, should provide an initial spark, continue that spark, until we get this done. Okay, The arts are essential in revitalizing the downtown. Uh, people come for the arts. The arts attract people. People like to look back at their culture, heritage, and history of the city, and that's what the arts bring to the city. Um, I have a geography class in high school. They had to do a paper on their hometown. 85 to 90 percent of the kids' hometown is considered to be Oxnard. But about those 85 to 90 percent kids didn't, didn't even know that we actually had a museum here in downtown Oxnard. They had no idea that the Carnegie was there on C Street. So I had to kind of explain that and so forth. And they were amazed, like going back, history, so forth, of the city um, on the YouTube uh, video, Oxnard 1961, uh, how the city looked in 1961. A lot of the kids were saying the city looked better back in 1961 than it does look now. It just kind of a nostalgic feeling, feeling for them, and it was kind of weird. They got to see how the city looked 50 years from now. And I kind of said, you know, oh, Plaza Park looked better. Oh, I'd rather go down, I would hang out on A Street if it's, it was just one way. So I feel that the arts do attract people, and people would come to the downtown if we invest heavily in the arts as well. I'm on the Cultural Arts Committee with Councilwoman uh, Doreen Padilla in the last uh, two years or so we've uh, given out um, almost 200, more than $200,000 in grants to individual artists, to emerging arts institutions and young people who are uh, doing music, painting, dance, theater. And I think that's, it's been good, it's not enough. We are, we have tremendous talent in our city and I think it's documented that the arts bring up um, the economy of any city. And a lot of cities have tried it very successfully. We need to do more. I'd like to see more public art. I'd like to see um, more uh, attention to our homegrown artists that we have, the musicians that are famous, the artists that are famous. We have a great connection with the Oxford College Film school. They're actually doing a film right now called Oxnard City of Dreams. You can find it on YouTube, a little um, uh, trailer. Um, we'll see that people come to art, including theater, because we do have uh, Teatro de las Americas. It used to be downtown. I wish it could still be, but there isn't a venue for it. We've had the Elite Theater, and all of these can have a connection to our downtown. Um, we have uh, also goings in addition to the Carnegie. These need to be enhanced and in many cases uplifted. The city does have some funding. It's from our development fees and that's great, but we need to do more and I think that would really make this an ex more, even more exciting place to be. And um, I, I look forward to continuing that effort. people here actually believe that you don't have customers coming into your shops because there isn't any park around. I just doubt it. Look, there are some communities that support arts very well because that's what the customers want. You go to a place like Carmel by the Sea, you've got an art gallery every hundred feet, it seems. I don't think the customers around here are all that interested in art. If there were, I'd be seeing art galleries opening up all over downtown. I don't see that. You know, kind of implied in the question is that somehow that we, the government, should somehow be subsidizing art. And taking your money to do it, by the way. Well, that doesn't help you one bit. If you thought art was such a great fit, you'd be putting it on, on your, uh, in, in your, in your uh, facility. And I don't see very many people doing that. And if anything, the city in some ways actually gets in the way of art. Now, California requires that really large projects, shopping centers, have public works of art. Uh, I think you have to spend between half and one percent of your budget on that. Now, leave me aside the First Amendment issues I have with that. I don't think it's right to force somebody to express a particular form of art. But even that aside, the city actually charges you a fee so they can review your art and see if it's appropriate. 
And that feeds $1,154.36 per piece of art. So if you got 10 little whale sculptures in your little shopping center, you're out of $11,000. That makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. The city keeps getting in the way. We don't need to be subsidizing art. That's not what's wrong with the business of art. So I want to say that if I had my way, we wouldn't be subsidizing art at all. Thank you. Okay, continuing with the same question. Candidate Huber. Huber. Art is one of the best kept secrets in Oxnard. If you walk around the city, you see mural art at the Goldswings, you see chalk art at the kitchen, you see portrait art at the American Painters, there's a portrait of Vince. <laughs> exhibit art, there's beautiful exhibits at the Carnegie Museum. Our restaurants also have antique art on the walls. And on, at 141 West 5th Street, it's one of the best kept secrets. You go upstairs, Top of the stairs, you'll see postmodern impressionism. It's a red, white, and blue sign that says, Vote for Steve Huber. That's sign art. But we have a lot of art in the city, and so it's, it's a tapestry that we need to take advantage of. Each part is a thread. It's not completely what the downtown's about, but it's what makes the downtown a mosaic, a, a tapestry, whichever thing you want to uh, use. So art's a very important part of our economic strategy for downtown. So we need to think about how we can include art in some of the functions that we have in the future. For instance, in September, it's a slow month for restaurants because everybody's back at school and they're not going out to dinner. Why don't we uh, have the uh, downtown management district think about a weekend in September where we have an art walk and maybe a pub crawl art walk, something like that. But we include art in our daily lives. And finally, we're the 113th largest city in the United States. We're the 19th largest city in California, and we do not have an art council that makes recommendations to our city council. So that's how we revitalize art in downtown. Yes, art, art downtown, we've, we've had art downtown, as the uh, previous speakers have alluded to. Uh, I just think it's such a unique thing, and we're talking about being innovative and et cetera. Uh, as a school, as a, a school board uh, trustee for uh, 12 years, we received calls and actually got things going about taking our art students downtown to a particular uh, art studio and get their uh, art uh, looked at by professionals and etc. The kids love that. They love the fact that somebody else was looking at it and were praising it that wasn't their teacher. Uh, this whole idea. This whole idea of even uh, giving or considering giving any money to the arts, uh, I would ask, like I say, again, I don't own the business, but I would ask, if we had an art program, would that help the foot traffic downtown? Would that be able to get some people actually into your store, have a meal, et cetera? Then I would certainly look at it. I'd certainly think that'd be part of the answer to this, but if we have, if we have three council members, on some commission and we were giving out money. And uh, I just am not aware of that. I, I follow some things, but let's go back to the kids. Any money we give, it's got to be for the present and the future. So these youngsters in elementary school should be a part of this plan. They come on down and, and be, uh, uh, again, see their, their uh, work looked at. I have to say this again, this is self-serving, but my granddaughter and friends, uh, they had a big, big, nasty fire where they lived up in the mountains. And they thought about it, and they went to an art uh, class, and they said, hey, would you write something about this? And they actually made a calendar. They, they drew a calendar, put it together, and that particular calendar was provided, I mean, was uh, said special, and it now sits somewhere in San Francisco, in the city of San Francisco. So they think now they're all the, you know, the professional artists, but, that just keeps going, and that could be a spark again that we're looking for. I think education um, in the elementary schools and for our youth uh, to help develop 
for, for an appreciation of art. Um, also, we could offer better plays uh, and maybe concerts within our city than what we already have. And I, I don't know what the cost factor of that would be, but you know, we are so close to Hollywood and a lot of A-list actors live there, and I don't know if we called them up and asked them to help support and, and remodel maybe our, uh, our theaters and, uh, and, and help with our arts. And I, I think that maybe somebody might be able to be willing to kind of help us and um, uh, you know, I, I also support the idea of having like art walks and um, uh, visits to the museums, but you know, some people have to know that the things are here uh, for, for, for in order for them to come. So, um, and I also, as far as coming uh, to the be remodeled, so that is um, you know, something that we need to do. But I think that there's, you know, there are committees in place, but maybe we can do more. And, uh, but, you know, there again, I, everything goes back to planning. We need to make a plan, and we need to stick to it, and we need to have goals and follow through. discussion from the public on this matter. If we are going to have arts, we need some lubrication. We need lubrication to make things work. In this day and age, lubrication is called money. If we have the money to assist starving artists, there's a famous moving company called Starving Students. Starving artists, starving students. You can be the best artist in the world. If you can't sell your product, you can starve to death. We need to have some method by which, if we do support the arts, is this going to be a hobby for individuals, or is this going to be something where we try to acquire professional quality art, try to show professional quality art? With respect to the Performing Arts Center, Performing Arts Center, with the City of Oxnard, I serve on the Performing Arts Center with Councilwoman Ramirez. If the Performing Arts Center is going to be successful, it needs to be supported by the residents of Oxnard. Until you can get the residents of Oxnard feeling safe and comfortable, with money in their pocket to spend in downtown, no matter how much art you have downtown, no matter how many museums you have, no matter how many events you have, it's not gonna be successful. I don't like being a naysayer, but if you walk into downtown area in the evening, if you listen to the downtown management when they're asking for funds from the city, if you hear the discussion with respect to haves and have nots in the downtown area, you will learn a lot. Arts is something of value in society, but if it's going to be subsidized, we have to decide how much and who's going to subsidize it. I believe there are higher priorities with limited funds for subsidy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're now at the last of our prepared questions, and this one is really to the downtown management district and partnership with the city. What role can partnership opportunities do you envision for the downtown management? I think that one of the issues that I have been working on uh, with, uh, also again with Councilwoman Padilla, is a homeless committee. I'm not talking about the Homeless Commission, but I think that is an area where we could have a partnership to, uh, because now it is the homeless uh, folks who sometimes frequent downtown do um, cause some concern with businesses and the residents. But people need a place to go, they need services, and we're, uh, we've been hearing from businesses here that I think we could, and you've been there too, Abel, uh, to some of our meetings, where we're going to go forward and try to find solutions for people. Sometimes it's housing, sometimes it's treatment, uh, and sometimes it, it's just uh, a job. 
Um, that doesn't work for everybody, but I think that's one of the opportunities. I would really like to see the OMD perhaps uh, change its boundaries somewhat to grab uh, the businesses across the street and uh, perhaps even down the road, like such as Dominic's and other places to make it a little bit more vibrant. Um, I think it's a very important for a better communication and to have more participation, and I believe it's coming uh, with the Tourist and Convention Bureau to highlight the things that are happening downtown and also to work with our public safety officials to improve security if that's an issue that people are feeling is important. Uh, also, I, I talk to people about landscaping. Uh, some areas are allowed to deteriorate. We have some vacant lots. I'd, I'd like to see uh, a joint effort to perhaps cultivate native plants. Uh, it doesn't have to take a lot of water, but the, the vacant lots in the downtown area do need attention from both the city and the OMD, and I think working together we can beautify, and that is maybe the first step to having uh, better results with our businesses. I'm not certain that the downtown management district is something that would really help you. I mean, but you folks made the decision to have one. You voted, you voted in and renewed it, and that's fine. I think it's really up to you folks to decide what you want this district to do. My understanding is that you select either some or all the leadership of that, and you can decide what activities they want to do within whatever's within their scope. I don't think it's up to us as a city council to try and direct that. It's your, it's your money that's going into it. I don't want to direct your money. I want you to direct your money. So that's that's what I think. You know, if you want to expand the role to, I don't know, maybe you know, one of the challenges that the city has is, uh, frankly, do a really poor job of maintaining the streets. And sometimes what you do is you turn things over to private industry in order to make it work better. And maybe, who knows, maybe, out of the box thought might be maybe, maybe you want the district to own your streets there. Maybe give you a property tax rebate and you guys can actually be responsible for maintaining them. I bet you'll get to fix those streets a lot better, better and faster than the city does. So I think it really comes down to ownership. The more that you have ownership, the better the results. Where you find the worst service on the planet is where government actually owns the property. So I think the more that we give you control to do what you want to do with your life and to improve your district, I think the better off we'll be. So that's my thoughts. Thank you. The question is, what role and partnership opportunities do you envision for the ODMD to help the city revitalize downtown? This is a team sport. I see the ODMD as a co-captain in that sport. With, along with the city, we need to work together on the master plan and revitalizing that planning process. Uh, we need to work with the city to find other people's money. Financial assets are out there, grants, uh, et cetera. We need to make sure that if the public services of the city need to be enhanced, than what you've already agreed to with district safety that continues. But the strategic planning to coordinate activities is what's, I think, key that the downtown management district needs to work on and work with the city. Uh, in the past, the city hasn't attended your meetings. Available 24-7. They need to be there, they need to, uh, you know, when I said bring your life to Oxnard, I think ODMD could do that too. Leadership, innovation, focus, and efficiency. And so when we talk about strategic planning, we're talking about coming up with these activities so that we coordinate a citywide schedule so that businesses are enhanced, so that we can revitalize downtown, so that we can plan and look ahead. And finally, let's take a look at marketing of the city through the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Make sure that it's not just the north end of town that folks are going to, but they're also coming to downtown. And I think the final thing is that you need to take a look at the GPS companies, ODMD, you can actually talk to Tom, Tom, and Carmen and put Oxnard on the map on those GPS navigation systems. Thank you. Excuse me. Steve, you can't be there 24-7. You have business. 
I'll just get in here. Um, number five. Sleep in the office. I see. <laughs> uh, the downtown itself has to create a niche in the city. Um, and number, how do we do that? Well, number one, uh, like I say, I'm not telling them about their business, but I do know that that organization, that organization has to get a partnership with the city of Oxnard, and more than just a partnership. Uh, they need to get the political will of this council to go forward and say we're going to fix this. And it should be on video or whatever so that they'd have to say uh, that they said it and they're going to do it. If they don't want to do it, they're going to say no. And uh, you, you're nowhere. You have no money if you don't get three people uh, to talk about uh, supporting you. Now, this, we need to talk in a positive way of getting this done more than just during election time. Uh, we must get the uh, downtown merchants got to, uh, must be part of the budget process. If they're not better, uh, part of the budget process, uh, they're spinning their wheels. Uh, they, they are given some money, but as we know, money doesn't, doesn't do much if it's not uh, having, again, that spark and, and that energy and the political will to get that done. Uh, they have to be on the agenda daily. They can't be invisible again. Uh, Oxnard is famous for being invisible. Uh, this particular case uh, has to be a has to be a success. It has to be a success. Uh, this city needs you to be a success. Uh, and good luck to you. First of all, I would like to thank the Oxnard Downtown Management District for all the things that you have done for the downtown. You've planted trees. You planted flowers, replaced sidewalks, um, put benches in. So you have already done an awful lot for the city, and I would like to see that continue. But I also would like for it to be with our other city leaders um, that we have. You know, we have the Chamber of Commerce, we have other organizations, and, and other groups of people that maybe we, if everybody kind of teams together, and takes a particular project and works on work on it as a as a city beautification. We want our goal to be to create a more attractive downtown for uh, visitors and for residents alike. And we want to um, have have uh, the different uh, things that we have here, like the Christmas plays, and um, you know there might be. And, and the Christmas lights and all of that. And there might be a way of getting those people from F Street and bringing them downtown and, and giving them a coupon or something for um, for a dinner or something, or, or a discount of something. I know I'm a famous coupon person, so if you give me a coupon, I'll go downtown and I'll spend it. Um, you know, but we need to, to continue to beautify our city and to make it safe and, and more attractive so that we all, um, so we can meet the expectations of the people. And, you know, once people, we meet their expectations, then they're going to return and they're going to uh, spend their money again. Thank you. And uh, first, um, the ODMD knows more about downtown than anyone else in the city. So therefore, I feel that the City General City Council should uh, try to form a partnership with the ODMD to revitalize the downtown. Who knows it better than them? So simple as that, we need to form a partnership with them. And what role? Well, it's easy. Um, the ODMD needs to like you know, let the council know what needs to be done in the downtown because no one knows it better than they do and we need to improve it without the help of the ODMD. Not much will be done about the downtown by the city alone. Thank you. First, I'd, I'd like to bring my view on this matter to you. You're asking what role the partnership opportunities do you envision for the OMD to help the city revitalize downtown? to help the city revitalize downtown. When you come to the city of Oxnard and you ask for funds, you are in a, shall we say, a weaker position than if you don't ask for the funds. You're in a situation where you are 
Basically, for lack of a better way to describe it, they're like animals fighting for scraps of food. Limited money with all the other entities that come to the city of Oxnard asking for money. When you have fights with respect to where the money will be spent, when you don't show up at council meetings or you don't have your staff, or worse, you rely on one individual to do all the heavy lifting for you, you lose out on those fights for the limited amount of money. This, as previous speakers have said, you guys should know what's needed more than anyone else. But at the most recent proposal, there were individuals that wanted opted out, including the ownership of this building, wanted out of this arena. One thing that just blows me away, the downtown management district, when there's discussions about the lawsuit that's going on with the downtown revitalization and the money from River Park, I don't hear any joint united force or voice for any of you with respect to them. I'm not scolding you, I'm just bringing it to your attention. Several million dollars will be spent in the downtown area. Everybody assumes the downtown area. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no identified downtown area. No identified downtown area. The downtown area is within the city of Oxnard boundaries. Could be River Park, could be the harbor, could be Ormond Beach. I mean, you have let things get this far. You have to stand up and fight for yourselves. To partner with the city of Oxnard and ask, unless you can control, or entice three council members to do the heavy lifting for you, you're going to have to fight and act as united in force like a fist. One finger is easy to break. A fist is very difficult to break. You've got to fight for what you want. And you have to decide what you want. Excuse me for a moment. Thank you very much uh, for addressing those uh, very important issues with regard to the downtown. And, uh, we'd like to now give an opportunity to the candidates to provide a summation, a brief summation. We'll keep it to about 30 seconds uh, for the benefit of the audience here. If you can just wrap up the essential points of your campaign. Brady Barber. My name is Steve Huber. Are you ready, Barber? I might go over 30 seconds. Question. Is it a 30 second summation? Yes. Yeah, 30 seconds. <laughs> My name is Steve Huber. Ready? My name is Steve Huber, and I'm uh, running for city council because I want to bring strong leadership and move our city forward. I've been preparing for this job my entire life. I've had command of a ship and command of a large activity. I run a business. I'm available all the time, nine to nine, whatever it takes to get our job here done. What we need to do here for the Oxnard Downtown Management District is to revitalize downtown. Is that the thing? All right, I'm at steveford.oxnard.com. Thanks. <laughs> Let me get my breath. Uh, okay, let's start here right now tonight. Let's take pride in the idea that we're going to fix this downtown. Let's defend our decisions we make tonight. Together, the few that are here tonight, we can start by having a plan, cleaning up the area, the perception of safety. We can do it, the people here. We can't solve our problems with the same thinking that created the problems. But never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. The last two quotes are by Dr. Einstein and Margaret Mead. I didn't come up with those. I'm Linda Linderman for City Council. Uh, the City Council needs to work together with the neighborhood councils and also the Chamber of Commerce and organizations such as yourself and other leaders of the community. Uh, if we all work together on a five-year plan and lay it out and figure out what has to happen and what can we do, and we all need a part in it, you, know, you need a voice in, in this too. Oh, goodness. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Oscar Madrigal, and first of all, I want to thank everyone here for coming tonight. And uh, to revitalize the downtown, we need help of the council, we need help from you, because you know the downtown better than anyone. And together with the partnership, we could bring the residents of Oxnard and neighboring cities to our downtown and improve it. Thank you. 
Number one, I'd like to thank the opportunity, the downtown group, for the opportunity to speak and put this event on. Um, most recent city council meeting last night, there was a question about restrooms in downtown for the farmer's market. There's questions about restrooms for people that come downtown. There's questions about street lights when downtown wanted their funds revitalized. There was questions about members feeling that some areas of the downtown were shortchanged in the funding and some wanted out. Until you have a united force and you can come to city council and you act as one voice with some specific... Thank you. Thank you. Not fair, really. Um, Carmen for Oxnard.com, check my website out. Uh, 40 years of public service. I have a record, I'm proud of it. I want to continue to serve, be informed voters. I love downtown Oxnard, it is our jewel. We have to restore, maintain it, keep it going, and that's a very essential part of our organic city. It's a whole, it's not just one part. One part's sick, the rest of us feel it. So keep on doing what you're doing. I've been in the private sector my entire career. I think I'm the only candidate here who can say that. Uh, I'm about a back to basics sort of guy, and I'm all about getting out of your way. So I think government is the problem, it's not the solution. You guys can do a great job if we're not the burden on you. Thank you. All right, thank you all very much.